Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's the Internet of Things, the Internet of Healthy Things. And if all this health is making you sick, we'll teach you how to do your own surgery. And if you have a bunch of gift cards sitting around, I have an app for you. It's time for iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Eero. Why settle for just a Wi-Fi router when you can have a brilliant, hyper-fast, super-simple Wi-Fi system? No more buffering, no more dead zones. Finally, Wi-Fi that works. To get Aero, visit eero.com or Best Buy or Amazon today. I'm calling it Hi OS today. Leo Laporte. <laughs> Hi, Megan. Hi, Lee. Leo Laporte. <laughs> the show we cover iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, even Apple TVs, anything with iOS in it. Mm -hmm. And today you picked something I think is very important for all of us. Healthy gadgets. Yeah. So stuff. Because if you can't just go out and go for a run, uh, if you need a little motivation, like a device to get you started on your journey towards health, we've got some devices for you. you. You have to start with the Apple Watch, which has become with version two, really kind of, I think, the best of all of the fitness bands. Mm -hmm. uh, it has GPS in it. Uh, it's, its heart rate is more accurate. I've tried them all. Its heart rate's the most accurate, at least for me. Uh, if you have, some some people say if you have tattoos or dark skin or a lot of hair, it might not work as well, but I, I get great results with it. Um, so this is a great health device. The fact that, you know, I notice you're, you know, I can share my activities rings with you and you with me is mm -hmm. a great motivator. Uh, our friend Renee Ritchie sends us donuts whenever we do well. Yes. And I yell at him. He sends me pizza. Oh, well, it's all the but, same. Uh, Allison Sheridan also, I share my activity with her from Podfeet. And she is, uh, she's sort of a negative motivator. Like you she's can do better good. than that. No, oh, no, she'll just she yells like at you. Her, kind of, yeah. That's mean. Like you're you're dangerously close to reaching your goal today, <laughs> or something like that. And then I tried it back at her, and I was like, "Oh, you're going to be in second place," and then immediately felt bad and texted her and said, "I'm sorry, that was rude." She laughed. There's a at lot me. of drama going on in people's Apple there watches is. that you just don't really see. The other thing about my activity goal is, you know, we're moving offices around here, and I used to be right next to the bathroom and the kitchen, and now I moved all the way away from your office down to the end. I said, "Put me in." far away from Leo as possible. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did notice because I came out of my office uh, today and I said, Maroni! And there's and Kara Cole looked at me and said, "What?" Said, "I don't, I don't jump <laughs> She's like not she here does. anymore." <laughs> but I reached my goal just from walking to the kitchen and the bathroom. Like <laughs> you it need just... a better goal. That's not a measure of your activity. No. that's a measure of the patheticness of your goal. Maybe it you is. Should, you should up I your did, goal. I did up it. It was yeah. 400. Now it's 405. This I do week. 500 we'll calories a week. A day, I guess it's a day. Yeah, a day. <laughs> a week. <laughs> 500 <laughs> a week. Can I show you? So some of these are like that they're just mm -hmm. uh, motivators they help you they don't have a strong medical impact some of the things we're going to show you actually your doctor might even say to you you should get one of these and tell us most of them are not fda approved and, and i your doctor you should consult with your doctor before you use these i i think that they're accurate uh, but he or she may not accept the readings from them not knowing whether they're fda certified uh but, uh, you know, your scale isn't FDA approved, is it? Mm -mm. And, uh, and in fact, scales vary a lot. A, a home bathroom scale may not match the one at the gym, which may not the one, match the one at the doctor's. But the idea is you have a relative measure. You understand it's not the measurement. It's a relative measurement. And so you have a way of saying, well, today I gained. It may not be my exact weight, but I gained. Mm -hmm. So I think you should treat these, some of these like that. This one, though, however, is FDA approved. What do you think that does? I don't know. Do you stick it on your forehead and it reads your thoughts? No, this is called the Cardia. It's from a live core. And this is, remember Vic Gondrotra? Maybe you don't from uh, Google Plus. But he created this uh, or, or works at this company. And uh, they took the trouble, the time, and the expense to get it medically approved. This is going to do an electrocardiogram. It does it very quickly. You put your thumbs on it just like that. And the, the uh, reason I know about this, uh, besides reading about it when Vic went there, is our own Jeff Jarvis, who has uh, 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 AFib, 
which is uh, not necessarily a heart attack, but it can be very dangerous. His heart starts to race. And he wants to monitor his EKG, he, and his doctor wants him to. He's been in the hospital uh, for it. And so uh, his doctor suggested, I think, that he get this. And you can actually send these EKGs to your doctor and say, am I, am I uh, in fibrillation or am I normal or, you know, what's going on? So let me log in. I have to actually log in. This, because it's FDA approval, you know, approved, they, they have, they're fairly serious about this. For instance, the first time you use it, before you can use it again, you have to send your EKG to a physician. And the physician will read it at their, at their company, will read it and then say, okay, the first time you use it, you send your EKG in. Uh, it says the following detectors are enabled in ECG recordings. I guess it's ECG, electrocardiogram, of 30 seconds or more. Normal, AFib, or unreadable. So if you've been diagnosed with ventricular flutter, ventricular bigeminy, or ventricular trigeminy, we recommend turning off the unreadable recording option in your settings. All of this, I don't really know. This is why you want to consult a physician. Uh, I could show you the first one that I did send uh, off, but this is this is an actual reading from my heart. What you're going to get, of course, is the heart rate, the heartbeat, but you also get the heart rate. And you can see uh, that can be sent off. You tap to share this, to email this to your physician, or you can pay for a reading from them. So let me, should we add a reading? Let me show you how easy this is. I have a normal sinus rhythm. Sounds like I do too, doesn't it? All right. I'm going to your most recently. So let's see. Create entry. Add a note. Optional save. All right. You ready? Uh, iOS today. Okay. And then save that. Connect to health. Okay. Oh, Lord. And I can also record manually other stuff, or you can get a blood pressure cuff or that kind of thing. So, uh, how do I... Uh... Your cardiac rhythm is stable and does not require immediate evaluation if you have many medical symptoms, blah, blah, blah. So, they'll, they'll give you a, a report, and then you can either call your doctor, or you can actually send these directly to your doctor. So, let's record right now. All right. So it's going to access the microphone. This is what's kind of wild. To start recording, place your fingers on the electrodes and hold until the recording is finished. During the recording, tell us about any symptoms you're feeling. Doctor, doctor, I'm feeling terrible right now. Maybe I'm, I'm uh, stressed. I feel woozy. Is everything okay? You see, it's, it's got my heart rate, which is 97 beats per minute. So obviously, I am a little stressed. We're in the middle of a television show, right? And this is actually uh, my... Uh, it's recording via audio, apparently, my uh, heart oh, rate. What you're, what, oh, audio. Well, because uh, you have to make sure the microphone's turned on. I'm not sure. So is it, it's a Bluetooth. Too? I don't know what it is. I don't know. So there it is. No abnormalities are found. But Phew. you can then have a clinician review it. For for a more comprehensive response, twenty dollars within twenty four hours. A one hour response, nine dollars. Oh, oh, and that's whether it's reviewed by a cardiologist or a cardio technician, or you can email it to your physician. Now, in order to do that, you do have to set up an account with Cardia, and it goes through a Life Core. So I should point out that uh, some people may be concerned privacy wise, but I'm sure a Life Core with FDA approval, I'm sure a Life Core is doing all the proper HIPAA things to protect yourself. So this is. Not something people, I mean, if you're a hypochondriac, you could really drive yourself crazy with this. I'm not mm. running, saying run out and get this. But if you have had heart problems before, or if your physician says, I'd really like to keep track, uh, you could do ECGs, electrocardiograms at home. And this is FDA approved. This is a live court. It's really interesting. How much if does it cost? Under $100. And That's would insurance thing. cover it if it's It might. I don't FDA know. You should check with your insurance coverage. But I think that's one of the reasons FDA approval is important. It also comes with a little... Uh, thing you can clip it into so you can and then you can actually glue it to the back of your phone so oh. if this is something you want to have with you at all times you can actually keep your alive core in the phone uh, at all times it's battery you see a little battery in it so you can change the battery if it runs out of juice uh, and uh, i'm pretty impressed by this this is from a live core uh, dr mom says uh, it's cheaper but not as accurate as a more professional and of course that's the idea is this is not a, a diagnostic tool 
that a physician would use in their office by any means. Uh, and if you've had a heart attack and you've had heart surgery, you should certainly check with your physician before using it. Um, but I think this is something that it's really amazing now that we can do an ECG, an electrocardiogram, with your phone. And this is, of all the things we're about to show you, the only one that's FDA approved. Mm. All right, so uh, we have two products from a company called Cardio. That's with a Q. It's um, funny because you said, I want to review this. And I said, I just bought it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That is funny. So the first one is a scale. Um, it's called the Cardio Base, and we have it there on the floor. That's what it looks like, your, your regular smart scale. It's $150, which is not cheap for a scale. Um, and then it connects to an app. So I think Brian said that he would uh, stand on it and be our uh, weighing model. Um, I so could do it too if you want. Do you? Now I have a number of Wi-Fi scales at mm -hmm. home, including the Why Things Wi-Fi scale. And in fact, go ahead, Brian. You can stand on my Wi-Fi scale. Actually, tweets. This one's connected oh, this to Wi-Fi. This one, it's connected to yes, Wi-Fi, and connects so it has to smile. So you tapped it. It smiles. You don't have to take your shoes off for it, huh? No. I mean, if you want to weigh less, you take your shoes off. Well, I'll tell you why. The Why Thing scale, a couple of the scales I have also do, they do three measurements. They do weight, but then if you're barefoot, they run a current through. You don't feel it, but mm -hmm. that will tell tell it your body. Gourmet, what did it say? <laughs> no. Uh, it gave a frowny face, and that's because it's used to what I weigh, and so it thinks that I've gained oh, so it's um, giving you, six pounds. No, it says Wi-Fi error. Well, that uh, that may be because we haven't set up the Wi-Fi. Yes, and properly. also on carpet, it's not going to give its best right. weight. Now, did you feel a little unsteady? It's and it's unsteady. Yeah, it, that was my, even on the regular, on the floor, it's unsteady. I felt like I was going to fall over a little bit. I don't know why that is. So if you could show my screen, you can see um, what it looks like, what the app looks like here. Um, so here, here's what it looks like. Um, that's what Brian weighs. Um, and he, if he were me, he would have gained five pounds in the last seven days. So that's why the frowny faces. Uh, and according to, um, it has my height. So and it calculates my age, the BMI based and, on height. Yeah. So and, yeah. if I were Brian, I would be overweight um, at my age and height. Um, and then you could add notes here, like this. So is the Brian. one thing the Y thing adds it, with that, uh, and and Dr. Mom's telling me it's called impedance. Uh, plethysmography, the one thing that it adds is this body fat measurement because it's sending a little current through you and, and, and those are pretty accurate. We use them at the gym and so forth. Um, and that'll give you some idea of your percent body fat as well. Whether that's useful, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it gives this too. So um, let's see it. Uh, let's see. It did this for me. Yes. Let's oh, it does, do, it does do the body yeah, fat. Yeah. So well, uh, the oh, BMI. So 33%. That's different. Oh, BMI that's is different. That's not body fat. Yeah. What is the MI? BMI is a calculation. Body it's body mass, mass index. And it's oh, okay. a calculation based on weight and height. And uh, it's it's used, it's really, it comes from uh, actuarial tables. Insurance companies use it. So well, I'm not sure how. Uh, this is body fat. I'm 33% body fat. I wonder how it knew 4 that. 4% bone. So may, do you have to be barefoot on that? I don't know. But I entered my uh, height and Doesn't my age. Doesn't come from that. It actually comes from measuring your body fat. Oh, like with the calipers? Yeah. Well, it's not calipers. It's a, it's. Like I said, mm. it's impedance plethysmography. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly, you can tell the difference. Now, caliper is the old-fashioned way of doing it, and it requires some skill in, in measuring it. Mm. This, you, If you go to the gym, if you ever go to the gym, and they give you a thing to hold with two electrical like metal handles, same technology, runs a current through you, and it, and it guesstimates or estimates your body fat. I don't know how accurate they are, based on uh, on that current. Mm. That's what some scales do. I don't, I don't know if that scale does it. Well, this will also help you set reminders, too, to, to weigh yourself, if you need a reminder to weigh yourself. Um, but this, you also have the cardio arm, which is also part of this. So cardio arm, and I have it, too. Well, and I've had a number of blood pressure monitors. You can, for 60 bucks, go out and get it, go to the drugstore, get an Omron uh, battery-powered blood pressure monitor. The difference with these is they are also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and so... Uh, they will, just like the scale, record to your laptop, your computer, or your, your uh, ta uh, tablet or uh, a phone. But this is the old bulky Why Things device. It's a, it, it's a Sphygmo mammometer. It's a blood pressure cuff. You're using a lot of big words yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Mom's <laughs> teaching me. So you put it on and, and you measure it. None of these, to my knowledge, uh, are FDA approved. And as a result, uh, you know, it's like a scale. It's not, it's not going to necessarily match what your doctors. I, my experience has been pretty close to what it says to the doctor, but my problem is 
and, and I think it's true for everybody. First of all, my blood pressure goes up a little bit when I'm at the doctor's. But also, one blood pressure measurement doesn't tell you much. You really want to know your blood pressure throughout the day. In stressful times, when you wake up, it tends to be higher. Uh, when you're relaxed, it tends to be lower at the end of the day. And so often a physician will say, well, go out and get a monitor and just monitor it periodically to give us a better idea of how it is going throughout the day. But this one is so big, you're not going to carry that around. You're not no. going to put that in your purse. But this, the cardia is. Yeah. So you've set it up? I've set it up, yeah. So it's it's super easy to set up. So you're just, op you just opening yours for the first time? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, there's a little pull on there that you have to pull that little cue thing. I think you have to pull that pull out. The Did you already pull that out? No. What is, oh. okay. what is that doing? That's um, attached. Oh, I see. That's so I can put my arm in it. And did it come? Did yours come with batteries? This is the complaint I have about both devices. They're yeah. regular AAA batteries, and they take a ton of them. I think the <laughs> the cardio scale takes like nine AAA batteries. Yeah. Um, and you this hate one, to have to, you know, put batteries in your scale. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, well, I mean, it also you can look at it this way. It's like not another thing you have to charge on your. Um, That's true. I would know, love to see USB. these be lithium ion, but I bet you they would become big and bulky and heavy as a result. So. Okay. So there is a little tab that you had to pull out. I've already yeah, that pulled allows you to pull put it on your on right. your arm, right? And then it pairs. So. I'll let you do it. Okay. We'll see. I do kind of want to compare our blood pressure. Do you, do you have good blood pressure? I, I don't. I'm on medication for high blood pressure. It's one okay. of the reasons I'm aware of this uh, particular subject. So here is, if you look at my phone, you can see I'm, I'm going to start. Now, a good one was going to tell you where to place your arm, what to be doing. For instance, you want your feet flat on the floor. You'd like right. your arm at heart level. Uh, you want to make sure you carefully place the cuff. Uh, there shouldn't be uh, any fabric or cloth impeding. Uh, so you want to follow those instructions to get an accurate result as closely as you can. Okay, so here it says pairing request. I'm going to pair it. You can start. Ah! All right. So I should try this with the... Uh, oh, wait. is it yours doing? You is turned mine on. <laughs> it's measuring your blood pressure. You turned pressure. mine on. That's interesting. It paired with well, yours instead of mine. Well, so that's good. It paired fast. Yeah, so that's your blood pressure. Yeah? Wow. If it's going to... I, uh... How's your cysts over your So DIA? what it does, and one of the reasons it uses so many batteries is because it's uh, it's got to inflate this cuff. Mm -hmm. This is how the doctor does it too, right? And then slowly let the air out, and they measure the systolic first, and then they're going to measure the diastolic. And I'm high. That's high. Mm, See this you red? Are high. Yeah. Oh. And but but that's and by the way, the pulse rate matched matched the one on the, the uh, ECG. What is so it? What does your um, Apple Watch say your heart rate is? Well, if you must know, I don't know. You know what? <laughs> don't don't I have to tell it to do that? Uh, it there's do an it. app with a little heart. Yeah, but I but I have to wait for a second yeah. while it measures it. Um, so that's interesting that it paired with yours and not mine, since it already had paired with mine. But now you get <laughs> to give away your blood pressure. For you. <laughs> so if you sh uh, if you show my screen, you'll see that um, you can add a note. So it's and it's a location, so it knows you're at work. So this is your blood pressure at work. So versus if you're measuring your blood pressure And that's at the kind of thing you want to know. You want yeah. to know time of day, work. You'd like a little diary that you could say, Anna, this yeah. was, you know, during a, a Home, program. Work, vacation, yeah, This gym, is great. Doctor. This is great. And it's like your weight. You, you don't want to be obsessive about it. Uh, it may be not exactly the same as you'd get at the physician's, mm -hmm. but it gives you some idea relative of what, you know, when your blood pressure goes up, when it goes down. Mm -hmm. And it'll give your physician a much better idea of kind of your overall uh, blood pressure. This says 95, so it's very close. Yeah, yeah. pretty close. And then yeah. it has a history again, so you can measure. Um, that was mine earlier. When, yeah. And what else does it do? You can, this is a big calendar. Again, reminders, remind yourself to take your blood pressure. Um, graphs. It gives a pretty detailed um, information here. So it says, you are in grade two hypertension. You're in danger of grade two hypertension. Yeah, I'm not going to... Again, one reading doesn't do it all. So right. I just had a cup of coffee. I'm doing a show. That's why my heart rate is elevated. Um, so that's why you want to do it a number of times in a number of different ways and so forth. We should just wear these around all yeah. the time. Well, I, but the thing I like best about this is that it's so compact. Yeah. And it's easy to carry around. And so uh, you might, you know, you're not going to carry something like this around. Even an Omron blood pressure meter is, is going to look like this with a thing attached to it. It's kind of nice. And I like the fact that when you've uh, tied it to your smartphone, it automatically gives you a record, a journal of this. And that's the kind of thing you, you really want. Not just one reading, but as many readings as possible. So we just fold it up like this. Huh? Yeah. That's, that's kind of nice. So it fits. It comes it fits in a in. really nice box.
Yeah. And I guess it comes with batteries since yours does already had batteries <laughs> in it. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing ever. Did I accidentally take yours? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so because I don't remember putting batteries in it either. I'm pretty sure it's there's no way to charge it besides the batteries. Uh, it must it must come with uh, batteries? Yeah. yeah. It requires a phone with Bluetooth, iOS seven or later, or Android four four or later. Um, and it works with the Apple Watch apparently uh, as well as Android and iOS. So uh, that, and this was inexpensive. It was under a hundred bucks, right? Um, let's see. I have that. How in much my was notes. the scale? The scale was one hundred and fifty. This is a hundred. Okay, not bad. Again, these are uh, you always consult your physician, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and but the and I think most physicians would say, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Don't get obsessive about it. Mm -hmm. But one blood pressure reading at a physician's office is not usually sufficient to to tell what's going on. They'd like to see it over a period of time in a, in a different situation. Exactly. Okay, my next gadget is sort of a health gadget, but I'm stretching it a it's little bit. It's kind of cool looking. Um, this is called the Betty Glow. The Betty? Betty. Really? B <laughs> Betty Glow? B-E-D-D-I. Uh, it's from Witty, W-I-T-T-I. Uh, they name a lot of their things with the double consonant I at the end. Um, it connects to Bluetooth. As you can see, it does not have the correct time, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, but it is connects to an app on my phone, the Betty app. Let's find the Betty app. There it is. Um, so this is health in terms of you know, getting enough sleep. We've talked about sleep apps before. Um, this is just, it's a Wi-Fi connected alarm clock. It doesn't do much else, except you can order an Uber with it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm late, get me a car, quick. Uh, and you can play Spotify or Apple Music. So it has not, all these- Not Lyft, just Uber. Just Uber, That's yeah. That's so weird. Just Uber and yeah, just Spotify and Apple Music. So how does it measure my sleep? Um, it doesn't measure your sleep. It just helps you sleep with this little nice glow here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's a uh, oh, yeah, it's let's turn the internet enabled alarm clock. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. That's pretty. Isn't that a nice glow? Okay. I don't think that would go over well in my house. What about white noise? Do you like white noise? White noise is very helpful. Okay. That's, that's healthy, right? Let's well, it helps uh, mask, you know, hotel noises, uh, things like that. Um, not sure why it's not playing the white noise. Oh, there it is. But that's coming from my phone. <laughs> not... <laughs> no, it's coming Wait. from this. Oh, it is? Oh, God, somebody woke up. So does this wake you up slowly, too, yes, with the light? Yes, that's what's healthy about it. It wakes you up. <laughs> I, knew I knew there was something. It wakes you up slowly in the time that you need to wake up. Okay, I'm going to turn the white so noise off. So this is going to get brighter and brighter. Yes. And you can listen to the radio with it, too. <laughs> it's the witty bitty. And get your traffic data. Okay, come on. Stop doing the white noise. Oh, shoo. Um, Yes, it wakes you up at the, the proper time slowly like the sun is rising. That's neat. Uh, this is $50. Not bad. Um, and it's you need a smart... Button. You, yes. And you can customize these buttons any way you want to. Um, you know what I like? Actually, I really like. You can dim everything. So I sleep best when there's not even. A, I don't like having a clock display. You can even dim that uh, from to, to darkness entirely. So you can control. I don't know why <laughs> this bright light. You can control how much is output by that, which I like that. Yes. So they, at, when you're sleeping at night, that's completely blank. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know because you shouldn't have that. Clock Any light's at night. bad. I think it's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else did I uh, find about this? Um, you do you can charge your smartphone with it too at the same time. So there's USB ports at the back. So if you're ever looking to, you know, you need another. I like that. Yeah, and there's an auxiliary in as I well. I like that. Mm -hmm. Does anybody still use a clock radio? <sighs> I don't know. That's a great question. I don't. Yeah. Um. But, I don't either. Yeah. I, can, I have my Amazon Echo uh, mm -hmm. wake me and play music and all of that stuff. I do that. That's why I found this to be a little bit over underwhelming because I do have, um, you know, it's not going to talk to me. It's not going to. It's um, cheaper than a dot. Give, it is. Yeah. Well, isn't a dot around $50? A dot is 50 It's not cheaper than a dot, but with a dot, you'd need speakers. So it's cheaper in that sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. So this is the Witty Betty Glow from Witty. Witty Betty Glow. Nice. Um, 
I'm out of things. Okay, I'm not out of things. You got more? These are my, I've talked about these before, but it's worth it um, because I, I still love them so much. They're the Jabra Sport Bluetooth headphones. Uh -huh. These are my go-to headphones for running or working out of the gym. And, you know, I just got the AirPods and I like them just fine at my desk. But if I move anywhere around, they're going to fall out. I tried running with them. It was a huge joke. Um, but these stay in my ears and uh, they have great sound and they're Bluetooth. Um, they have really easy controls that you can access on off. They pair really easily and they come with an app that uh, you can download an app where you can track your runs and track your exercise, which I do. And I really, um, that's what I like the most out of it. So I, uh, it, tells me where I run. I can set a goal. Let's see if I can show you what it'll show. My last run. Um, I, oh, history. Here's my history. So I have two runs here and it tells me my average heart rate during the run. It tells me the duration of the run. Um, it tells me my training effect. The workout was very intensive for you. She also will say that. The other thing, this has a heart rate monitor in the ear. So that's how it helps develop you know, helps tell you which how many that's calories. cool so yeah. i want to see more of that yeah so it's an in-ear um heart monitor i don't know how accurate it is but that's how it tells calories and heart rate um and intensity and pace and it goes into a lot of detail so it'll tell you like what mile you know per mile what you were running and speed and she has a very nice voice and she will tell you what your speed is per mile and then you have a little map of where you ran, um, which I'm okay showing you because I'm moving, so I don't live there anymore. Um, <laughs> so if you want to stalk me, you'll be stalking someone else there. Um, and a detailed heart analysis. And it has little workouts that you can do. So cardio workouts, um, it'll do, you can, it gives you the, uh, the exercises you can do. So it'll do a little cardio core, like high knees running, rest, squats, rest, push-ups, rest, plank, butt Did you kickers. Say High knees running? High knees running. Oh, I thought you said high knees running. <laughs> high <laughs> knees a new running. Kind, a new kind of running I wasn't aware of, but I could use. High, you, yeah, high knees running is good for your high knee. Okay. <laughs> it would be, wouldn't it? So Jabra Sport Pulse Plus Pulse. That's neat that it does the heart them. rate. Is that, yeah. I've never seen any. Uh, yes. Any, that was them. what the promise was kind of of these uh, in-ear uh, monitors mm -hmm. is that they might be able to do a lot of the of the readings besides heart rate, but, uh, you know, other things as well. By the way, apparently my uh, heart rate has gotten much better. It's down to 69. Oh. So I've calmed down. You have. Well, that other thing wasn't working, so that was... That, that raised my blood pressure, too, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mine was 104 a second ago. I don't know what was going on there. Oh, I'm back to 91. Oh, goodness. See, as soon as you... It's like uh, Schrodinger, Schrodinger's cat. Mm -hmm. I'm either dead or I'm not. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're dead. I think I'm not dead <laughs> at this point. I've got one more. Yeah, let's this see. This is the pear training system. Have you heard of pear? No. The only P -E -A -R, thing P E A R like the P E A R. Fruit. The only thing I don't like about this is the headphones um, are not. They they still require a headphone jack, which as we know I do not have. Uh, uh, so, but you don't have to use the whole system. This is a chest strap, and chest straps they say are the best way to measure your heart rate when absolutely. you're exercising. Yep. It's closest to your heart. That makes sense. So this comes with the whole system. This is the chest strap that has these little things that stick to you. And then it pairs with an app. Do they really stick to you? Well, kind of when you start to sweat, they, they don't like, it's not like adhesive or anything, right. but it's suction. Okay. So it doesn't slip around. Right. Because have you ever used a heart rate monitor when oh, you're yeah, many, many, many exercising? Times. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a pain the, the when they- The polar heart rate monitors you put yeah. right there. Yeah. But if they don't, if they disconnect in the middle of your right. run or whatever, no then good. you get no credit. Yeah. And it's all about the credit. Are these the standards so that if you were on a uh, treadmill that had a heart rate, monitor that would that sense. you can hook it up into the, that? There is a standard, you know, that uh, some, mm -hmm. I don't know if these are polar standard or not. But That's a great question. Yeah. Because I've only used it with the app. So it comes with the, the headphones that um, if you're And what are the headphones like, for? Does it play a beat to you or something? It talks to you. What does it say? It encourages you or tells you if there's workouts included in the pair oh. system. So it'll say high knees running, for example. <laughs> and you'll do that? Yes. Nice. Um, so this would be, if you wanted to do a, a seven-minute workout or something like this, it yeah. just could walk you through it, and you'd also get the heart rate monitor. Right. That's cool. But it also is great for, it's, it's. I don't know if it's necessarily designed for running, but it has a lot of running workouts. Like if you're training for a 10K right. or training for a marathon. Nice. Um, and It then, says running to mountain biking to strength training to yoga. So they have hundreds of workouts. So there really is quite a bit of stuff. Kettlebell, mm -hmm. spin, 
That's neat. Yeah. And How the, much is this? The, the, the system costs $60. Not bad. So Not that's bad headphones, chest monitor. strap. Yeah. And then the workouts themselves are in-app purchases, but you can be a member for $30 a year and get unlimited get workouts. Ones. Uh, it also it says it, it will uh, adjust your workout so that the right level of intensity. So it might say speed up. Right. S yeah. Get, get working. Heart, yes, yeah. exactly. Encourage me. Pyramid like intervals. Are you going to use this, you think? Um, I've used it. I used it in the past a little bit, but I can't really use it anymore because of the headphones. I probably could use it with my Bluetooth That's a little headphones. frustrating, But do you, you should use it. I don't have headphones either on my iPhone. Oh. And as you can see, this new Android phone I've got here doesn't have headphone it jack either. It doesn't have either, anything so. either. They're, mm. they're, 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 they're disappearing fast. This they has are. a Type-C connector on the bottom. So. Well, you could use your my own headphones with it. My Pixel still has headphones. You don't so this will work them. with Android as well yes. as uh, iOS. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, maybe I will get a pair of these. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty cool. Bluetooth 4. It works with your Apple Watch too. So the pair... It'd be nice if system. these would work with the AirPods. I wonder... Do your do. AirPods stay in when you exercise? Uh, I noticed yours do not. Because <laughs> yes. you had a picture of them on right. the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't exercise, so <laughs> I, I'll let you know when I do. You exercise in front of the TV in your exercise room, right? Uh, yeah, so I don't wear headphones there. And at the gym, I'm, I have a trainer, or I usually don't listen. But when I've used a treadmill at the gym, they haven't fallen out. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't run on the street or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, But that's where they would fall out because you're, you know. Yeah, and then your ears get sweaty and right. I try not sad. to get sweaty when I work out. Yeah. I find that un unsightly. Yeah, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> so all this of these. This is neat. I like this. I might yeah. get. I might get these. That's great. So I think heart rate monitoring is the single most important thing you can do while you're working out. Okay. I can't wait till they can tell you things like how much oxygen you're using. VO2 oh, VO2 maxes. max. Actually, my job or sport can do the VO2 the max. The one in your ear will yes. tell you VO2 max. Yeah, you do a little test. I don't know if it, you know, it's, again, it's not It should FDA. be in theory because, you know, the blood, uh, the blood membrane there, the membrane to your, uh, is very thin. It yeah. Should, it might be able to monitor that by taking mm -hmm. a picture of it. I don't know. Yeah, you do a little training thing and nice. it tells you what your VO2 max is wow that's so, these the job or sport and how are these they don't fall out they don't ever fall out because they, they never uh, they well have... they go all the way in the ear and they're they're you know they're not great you can't hear a lot so um don't don't run in a busy area yeah you can't, you know, don't ride you can't hear traffic them. behind you and things yeah. like that mm -hmm. hey lady There's get the... out of the road you can't yeah, hear that i don't hear yeah. that that's maybe so. not a bad thing mm -hmm. so okay so you have a workout room Right, I and you're a, watching we call things. It a gym, a gym, a home gym, a home gym, and you're downloading things probably pretty far away from your router. Actually, this was the single most important reason we got a Euro router because I couldn't, because Lisa would be in the gym saying, "I, I don't have Wi-Fi," because it's kind of a distant part of the house. Well, our house is all on one one floor, so we don't have the issue of up and down stairs and stories, but we have it spread out. Look, at almost nowadays, almost everybody has trouble with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi used to be this really great thing, and then everybody got it. And now that everybody has it, you've got congestion, you've got noise. We're doing more with our Wi-Fi, too. We're transferring so much more data. How about instead of a Wi-Fi router, your old router, it's time to update it and get a Wi-Fi system. No more buffering, no more dead zones. It's Wi-Fi that's smart. It's so smart. It blankets your entire home. And by the way, it's beautiful too. It's kind of a very appropriate for Apple people. Here, I have, a, I have an Eero right here. Um, the Eero system, we ended up getting five units. They say each of the units, they, they sell them in individual packs, packs of two or three. Uh, each individual unit is good for about 1,500 square feet. So figure out how big your house is. They're very attractive. They have a little blue light, but you can even turn that off in the software. It's all controlled by software on your iPhone, your iPad, your Android device that tells you everything you need to know. On the back, there's two Ethernet connections. One goes to your uh, cable modem or your DSL modem. If you want to drive wired devices, I have this connecting to a small switch for my home theater, for instance. There's, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if you can use the USB to connect a hard drive, but one of the things I do know is they've really overbuilt this. They put more RAM in it, more processor than they needed, and I bet you that the, the USB port's like that too. It's for future use because they want to be able to upgrade this, and they do all 
the time. Your Eero, when you first install it, will take a look at your network, will do what it can to improve your network as it learns how you use it. Firmware updates do more. They, uh, they actually just did the Mesh 2.0 update, which made it even more amazing. So it's hard to explain exactly how this is different than a Wi-Fi router, but let me see if I can try this. Your Wi-Fi router is, you know, it's like us having a conversation here. I can speak in a normal tone of voice. You can hear me. What if we went into a crowded bar where there were other people, other Wi-Fi routers, and they're talking too? That's what it's like in your house. The problem is, up to now, the way most Wi-Fi router companies work, they just turn up the volume. But if you're in a bar and everybody speaks louder, it doesn't make it easier. It makes it worse. Now it's just really noisy and still not working. So the Eero is smart. Instead of getting louder, it's going into the rooms it's going into the parts of the house where you are they talk to each other there's automatic handoff as you move around it will automatically change channels and even bands it's a tri-band router it'll even change bands to be to work great maybe it's dual band but it'll change from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz automatically to work best with wherever you are it is remarkable plus you have all sorts of great things like parental controls you can do that with your amazon echo i, I you know i have set up all of Michael, our 14-year-old's devices, right? So I can say, Echo, pause Michael's internet. And he's and then the howl begins. <laughs> what a, the internet's down. Go to bed. The internet, go to bed. But mom and dad still work. Uh, and by the way, he can't shout at the Echo. Hey, Echo, turn Michael's back on. You have to do that in the password-protected app. You can even check how your internet is. When you're not home, it'll give you bandwidth uh, uh, metrics. It'll tell you what devices on your, on your network. It's really, it's, it's, it's the next generation of Wi-Fi. It's currently rated four and a half stars on Amazon, 750 reviews, one year warranty. They're celebrating, you know, their first birthday. It's a year old. It's the original, uh, you know, mesh Wi-Fi networks. And you can now, they've lowered the price permanently, get a three pack, which is what most people will start with for three ninety nine. That's a hundred dollars off. A uh, two ninety nine for a two pack. That's uh, that's all you'd need maybe in an apartment. Uh, that's fifty dollars off. Eero is e e r o. You can get it at eero dot com e e r o dot com or Best Buy or Amazon. And now to celebrate their first birthday, prices have been permanently lowered for the best Wi Fi network ever. Eero, try it today. And we thank Eero so much for. Make it possible for you to stream us mm -hmm. <laughs> in your house Wherever without buffering. You are. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have just one piece of news, and that is that there's the chorus is growing against the curved screen for the iPhone 8. What do you think? Do you think they're curved or no curved? <sighs> I don't know. You know, we don't know a lot really about the iPhone 8. We know that Apple has put a reservation in for 160 million OLED screens from Samsung. So I do credit that there'll be an OLED screen on at least one of the new iPhones. Maybe not all of them, right? There might be a high-end one and then one or two other lower-end ones. But there'll certainly be at least one with an OLED screen. And one of the features of OLED is you can do what Samsung did with its Galaxy S6 Edge and S7 Edge and its Note Edge, is you can, instead of stopping at the edge of the screen, you can curve around it. I, that's purely cosmetic. There is no real advantage to it. Samsung tries to put additional information on the side here, but it's dopey. I always turn that off. Your fingers get in the way. So it's as my opinion, it's pure aesthetics. And Apple's going to have a gorgeous phone no matter what, right? I think Don't so. Don't they make the best looking phones? Yeah. So I'm not too worried about whether it has a curved or not. I think Apple will figure it out. It's not like you're losing some functionality right and right? you i mean it's more expensive the curved like the flexible well, it's glass also is more much expensive. more fragile i mean think yeah. about it you put a case on a phone you can at least protect the edge on a normal phone but if it's curved you have to have the case kind of be away from the curve uh my daughter has my galaxy s7 took her three days to, to crack the screen because it's just not as protected right <laughs> three it's, it's in the case it's three in the case three days is right. pretty good for her she you know what her last iphone uh, never, she, she was, at, we got her really powerful, you know, case, but, uh, she never cracked it, never broke it. It got, it got stolen, unfortunately. Oh. So I, uh, I said, well, you're Android from now on. And, uh, she's not happy about that. Mm. But when you break them, what are you going to do? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, first it's one's, expensive. first one's free. After that's Android. <laughs> okay. We got that's some... punishment, isn't it? <laughs> Man, I'm a terrible father. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, kid, you're Android from now on. <laughs> Better be careful. It could be Windows Phone next. BlackBerry. Actually, I gave my son a BlackBerry. Did he, he want it? Like retro? No. 
he again he was in barcelona phone got stolen oh. i said well i don't have another iphone i can spare you but i'll give you a blackberry priv that, that lasted he said that got stolen too like three days later <laughs> i don't know what happened <laughs> All right, we got an email. Kids. Mike from Tucson says, on the last iOS today, you and Leo were discussing USB charging for wall sockets. While it would be handy to have it in the wall, I have created a charging drawer. Yes. The charger is a five-port USB charger from Anchor. They also make 10-port as well. As the devices get charged, the cables can stay in the drawer and closed. At the end of the day, open the drawer and plug in everything in. I just drilled a small hole in the back of the desk drawer to plug in the charger. And he sent us a picture also of his charging station, uh, which his charging drawer. So there it is. That's the drawer. Yeah. Great anyways. minds. I, I did know. exactly the same thing. And I did it in my bedroom because uh, Lisa was complaining about the lights, the LEDs that blink. So I took my uh, my bedside table has a drawer. I drilled a hole in the back. I actually even used an anchor. Uh, you Multi-port USB charger. You put that in there. You take the power cable out through the back, plug it in. When you close the drawer, you can't see any lights. Everything's in there. It's it's a great way to go. And it's isn't it ironic now that we need so many chargers? Yeah, it is crazy. One I, is not enough. I have two of those Anchor 10 port. They're so great. <laughs> They're <enough>. I know. <laughs> two. So, when I yeah. travel, I, I pack like 18 USB ports. <laughs> There's a ton of them. There's a good reason to do this, by the way. There, more and more you're seeing hotels have USB ports. They'll mm -hmm. be built into the, you know, the office area or by your bed. Do not use the USB ports. Uh, for, don't take USB from strangers. There's always the risk that when you plug in your device to a USB port that you're getting more, you're getting something like a virus instead of just power. You mean those ones on the desk? Yes. Do not use those. Bring your own charger, plug it in the wall. Or if you, if you insist, get a special USB cable that's charging only. Remember, USB transmits data. Mm -hmm. And uh, lightning, it's perfectly possible to have, uh, you know, plug into something malicious that can inject something onto your devices. So use a charging only cable if you have to. Better, though, to bring your own USB charger. Huh. There's a tip for you. Yeah, that is a good tip. I have a Belkin uh, USB. It has two plugs, two regular plugs, two USBs, and it's a char rechargeable battery. So you plug it in, and it's a portable Isn't that battery. that nice? Yes. That's handy. I love it from love Belkin. Yeah. Yes. All right, here's a question that you might not be able to answer, but if you don't, then hopefully you can answer it. Human chess writes, I've been having a problem when someone keeps trying to sign into a device using my Apple ID. It usually happens on the weekend. Weekend, if I'm watching something on my third generation Apple TV, it knocks me out of what I'm watching all the way back to the home screen, and I have to go back in and restart what I was watching. They will try twice within a couple of minutes, and then when I don't allow them to sign in, they wait 15 to 20 minutes, and then they try again. A friend said I might want to change the email address associated with my Apple ID, but I don't want to lose any of my in-app purchases. Oh, that's really interesting. So what they're doing, what I guess he's getting is that four-digit code. Right, if you try to log in, but that tells me somebody has your password in addition to your email address. If you if you uh, try to log in, if I tried to log into your, I could guess your email address, mm -hmm. and I tried to log into your Apple ID, uh, it would say, "What's the password?" I would enter a password. It would just say no. So if you're getting that pop up that says, "Okay, somebody's trying to join your account. Here's the four digits," that means that somebody not only knows your email address but knows your password. So first thing to do, change your password. I would also, I mean, it sounds, I don't know if you have two-factor turned on. That might be actually what you're getting. If you do, that's good. Keep that on. That's what's kept the bad guy from occupying your Apple account. But you're, you're, you're hanging by a thin wire here. Change your password. I, I'm pretty sure that's the only way you would get interrupted. Because if I log into your ID right now and I type the password, it's going to go, you know how it, goes no 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 yeah uh it's not going to do anything to you it's not going to pop up something to you unless okay here's one other thing if you may have it set up that your email notifies gives you a notification so if there is a, a bad login apple will send you an email saying uh you know you sometimes you'll you try to log in maybe you have your email sending you notifications or something else that's pulling you out of what you're doing but that, that, that four-digit number or six-digit number that pops up when you uh, try to associate a new device to your Apple account, that only pops up if somebody has your email and password. Mm. Now, if it's your kids and they have your password, tell them knock it off. Okay, so if you change your password and this still happens, the, the second part of the question is... Well, should he, he change his email? No. Change his Apple ID. Yeah, you, I don't... Uh, 
uh, Apple's funny about that. Uh, don't. <laughs> Well, Scooter X has a link to Tech Radar that says how to switch to a new Apple ID and keep all your purchases. Yeah, good luck. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I had to switch my IDs, my Apple ID once, and uh, yeah, all the movies I had are gone. All the music yeah. I had is gone. I guess in theory you could call Apple and have them transfer it over. I'd have to read that article. I'm not sure how they how they think that you could do that, but mm -hmm. Apple's funny about that. And you know why? The record industry doesn't want people doing that, mm -hmm. right? They don't want you to just say, well, here, here's all. Because otherwise I could say, yeah, uh, I changed my Apple ID to Megan at twit.tv. Uh, could you just move all my records and TV shows over there? That's exactly what the record industry and the movie, movie, uh, movie industry doesn't want you to do. So that's why Apple is not going to, it's tough to do that. Yeah. You have to really talk somebody into helping you out, I think. Yeah. Uh, Junior415 says it might be a neighbor with an Apple TV. That's my experience with this issue. Well, if you're on an Apple TV, yeah. If you're on an Apple TV... Like a neighbor's trying to um, connect to Bluetooth with their Apple TV. Yeah, I mean, you could turn off AirPlay on your Apple TV and you wouldn't see that. If that's what's happening, somebody's trying to AirPlay to your TV, just turn off AirPlay in your settings uh, and, and that way you won't get that pop up. Maybe that is what's happening. Because what if like you're in an apartment and you both have your Apple yeah, that's TV what's stuck happening. like this and then someone's, they're both aiming their, because you, know, you don't have to aim your Apple TV no, remote. No, that's right. It's RF. So that's, that could be it. So that would make sense. Yeah. So turn off AirPlay and that shouldn't happen, right? Yeah. Or just make your uh, neighbors switch to Chromecast. That would be an interesting way to mess with somebody. So what you do is you're sitting on your laptop, your Macintosh, or you're sitting on your iPad and you want to, uh, airplay it to your TV mm -hmm. set, and you see the TV set, you'd have to be on the same network for that to work. I don't think your neighbor yeah, could do that Yeah, too. Maybe you are on the same, maybe they are on the same network. Ooh, that, yeah. that's bad. Cha okay, more things to change. Change your network password. Yeah, maybe. And if you don't have one, get one! Yes. All right, here is a cautionary tale. Are you ready for a cautionary tale from I Wayne am. Tanaka in Ridgecrest, California? He writes, after I updated my iPad, I had to re-sign into my iCloud account. After getting my verification code, I got an Apple iCloud notification on my iPhone that someone was trying to log into my iCloud account from Phoenix, Arizona. Remember, he lived in Ridgecrest, California. He says, of course I panicked and I denied permission. Then I changed my iCloud password on my iPhone and my MacBook Pro. I again tried to log into my iCloud account on my iPad. This time I completed my login and got the same warning. Confused, I ended up calling Apple Care. It took the follow-up call from the Apple Care senior advisor who verified that the message I was getting is part of the two-factor login process. The location on the warning message came from the regional hub for Mediacom, my cable provider in Phoenix, Arizona talk about being confused so this is uh, a general problem that everybody should be aware of uh having to do with ip address geolocation so uh sometimes a device will figure out where you are via gps that's the most accurate but even if you turn off if you if you have gps on your iphone for instance and you turn off wi-fi apple will say well you know it'd be more accurate if you use wi-fi as well right because it's doing geolocation based on not merely the gps but what wi-fi signals it can have if you're on a computer and you're surfing somewhere you have an ip address in many cases services like in this case apple's two-factor authentication will notice where you are and figure it out based on, it'll have your, only thing it has is your IP address, but it'll say, oh, that IP address, in this case, Mediacom, that's in Phoenix. That's because that's where Phoenix, where Mediacom is, not where you are. That's where your internet service provider is. Frequently, this will happen with people with Sprint phones will be in Kansas City, or people with Verizon phones will be in New York City. It's because uh, the geo, IP address geolocation is poor. It doesn't work very well. Uh, you get the same kind of error messages from Facebook, Remember, Facebook will also say somebody just lo logged in from Phoenix, Arizona. Was that you? So it's, you know, the first time this happens, it's confusing. But from now on, when you see Phoenix, you'll know, oh, that's my answer because that's where it thinks that's the geolocation for Mediacom Internet addresses. They're all in Phoenix. OK, it's actually a big problem. There's a, <laughs> there's a family that lives in the middle of the country in Kansas and uh, some of these geolocation databases, if it looks at an internet address and says, well, I don't know where that is, it's in the U.S., will assign it a location at this family's house, which happens to be in the look, center of the United States. <laughs> well, it's, it's here. <laughs> and, and this poor family 
has had all sorts of things happen to it. There's a great uh, article uh, from... Um, Cashmere. Uh, Cashmere yeah. Hill wrote mm -hmm. it. Uh, uh, you know about it, then. Mm -hmm. And this poor family, there have been toilets left in their driveway. There are people come up the path and say, you, I, you have my iPhone. It's because find my iPhone, found an IP address, geolocated it to this poor family in Kansas because it didn't know really where it was. It just knew it was in the U.S. So geo, do not rely on IP address geolocation. This is a great warning. Somebody just logged in from there. But it would it, before you panic... Because I've done, by the way, I've done the same thing. Yeah, I'll tell you my story. I, I was trying out uh, a VPN and Tor service to anonymize your access, right? So no one knows where you're coming from. And then I forgot that I had it on and I logged into my Facebook account. All of a sudden I got a warning that somebody from Russia was trying to log into my Facebook account. I freaked out. I changed all the addresses. And then I realized, oh, that's me. <laughs> That's me. Actually, it was Cairo, Egypt. That's me logging in from Cairo, Egypt, because I'm using Tor. So this is the this is just kind of the nature of it. We assume that uh, somehow everybody knows exactly where we are when they're on the internet. They don't. Mm -hmm. They're guessing based on your internet address. But that can be confusing for a user. I mean, he yeah. said that it's like buried in the you know the the the, the error message that you get or right. the message that you get. But. Well, Gmail does that. If you go to the very bottom of your Gmail and you should do this if you have Gmail every once in a while, it'll show you recent logins and you'll see the geographic mm -hmm. locations. And when you, if you've been logging in from your phone, it almost certainly isn't where you are. Mm -hmm. It's where your phone company's headquarters mm -hmm. is. All right, I got one more email. This is from Bob. He says, lately I've been trying to wrap my head around the best workflows when it comes to managing most of my work on an iPad Pro. I'm full-time, I'm a freelance writer who is usually handling multiple article assignments in addition to book projects in various stages and even song lyrics. While I've got an iMac, the fact is that much of my work these days is done entirely on the MacBook, on the iPad, pad pro simply because it's always with me i currently use scrivener and mac os and ios for my drafts and research then i export to word submitting to my editors i've just started working with the app documents inspired by comments in the mac story in in MacStories.net to see if that might help somehow by providing a central location for everything i'm also looking at Is this guy getting paid by the word <laughs> I'm also looking at Devon Think to go Love as Devin a re Think. repository yeah. for web clippings, yeah. notes, emails, atta email attachments, but it's fairly costly, about $22 for the uh, the pro iOS version, and I can't help wondering if it would really be better than Evernote, to which I already subscribe. I'm also paying for Dropbox storage, which I primarily use as backup storage between devices. So I looked up, uh, you, you've used Devon Think? Love Devon Think. It looks like it's $14.99 now. So. Yeah, but there's a subscription, I believe. Oh. Uh, so that's Devin's thing to go. So here's the deal. Uh, this is a very personal thing. Every work writer has a different workflow. Uh, Andy Anako loves Scrivener. Uh, one of the things that Scrivener lets you do is have your notes on one side and your text on another. If you're writing a book based on research, a script based on research, you can handle that. Devin Think is kind of the same idea. It's a database of all your notes, your clippings, your research. It's a place you can dump everything. It has much better search capabilities and organizational cap capabilities than Evernote. But some people prefer Evernote because all I need is a free form database. They might even use the free Google Keep. It just, it's very personal and you have to try the different ways of doing it. All of them, I think, are trying to duplicate what writers did when we worked with paper. You know, you'd be typing on a typewriter. You'd have your clippings, your notes on the side there. And that's why the kind of Scrivener, the standard kind of uh, layout is you have notes on one column and then you have your document next to it. It's a little challenging in a digital form to do that. It's, a, you know, if you're doing it in paper, you can <laughs> spread yourself around. You can put a map on the wall. You can have strings, pieces of yarn going from one thing to the other. You can do what a, you know all sorts of crazy things. Uh, digital is is not so physical. It's a little bit more constrained. You can only see a little bit of your total research at a time. So that's why people are looking things. I would Devin think has a free trial. Uh, I would look at Devin think. There's a desktop plus a, a, a mobile. That's the Devin think to go. Uh, it's kind of a suite of tools. And it's been used for years by people who just really want a hardcore research database. Scrivener is the next is is frankly I think a great tool. A lot of people use that as well. So, so you would recommend two. if he works mostly on his iPad Pro to get the Devon Think on iPad, both. This is the problem you have because the iPad Pro is such a small screen. I know it feels big, but it's such a small screen, and you can only do two windows. You know, you can do, and so. Uh, to me, an iPad Pro is, is a very limited thing for this kind of research and writing. 
you know. Uh, however, if you wanted to use the iPad Pro as a side and write on your desktop computer, then I think DevonThink would be a really good tool. And because it does synchronize with your desktop, um, it might be the right thing for, for that. But this is so personal, you know, you just mm -hmm. have to figure out what works. Uh, what, you know, you don't want it to get in the way of your flow, but you want to be able to keep all your research available into hand and easy to find. So it's a very personal thing. If you're already using Scrivener and that's not quite right, uh, I would look at Devin. Devin's amazing. They've been and, doing this for a long time. And Evernote, how would you compare the two? Evernote is very, it, I mean, compared to that, it's very sim simple, just searchable note database. I, I don't think for that particular uh, tool, particular purpose, it's as good a tool. Um, these Both of the Scrivener and Devin think are designed for research and writing. Mm. Like if you're a college kid and you're doing a paper, right? You have all your sites, all your books, all your notes. You've been to the library. You know, when you and I were in school, we'd probably have that stuff arrayed on the table around mm -hmm. us. You probably still do with your bullet journal and your I do, obsession with, my, with handwriting. I know, my analog lifestyle. <laughs> uh, you know, you might have file cards. I mean, right. we're trying to find a way, and it's not a perfect fit to do this digitally. And, and on an iPad, makes it even harder because it's just a small screen in such a limited space. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't. I mean, there are other programs. I would. I think Devin Think would be the the one to try out anyway. If you want, if you're not happy with Scrivener. All right, it's App Cap time. Is it time for our hats? It's time for App Cap. This is the time in the show where we wear hats. And because it's uh, almost Thanksgiving. Yes. Well, because we were talking about health and scales and eating. I think that's what Burke, our uh, chief hat officer, was thinking about. I I, I can't decide if I'm uh, a, a Viking. Uh, the Pope or a turkey head? I'm pretty sure you're the turkey because okay. this is what I like to call sometimes you're the turkey and sometimes you're the chef. Sometimes you're the <laughs> chef and sometimes you're the bird. You're the bird in this one. You know, when it comes to Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> the cook is involved, but the turkey is committed. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. So we wear uh, hats because it's app cap time. It's time to talk about our favorite apps. And this mm. one, uh, a viewer named Elizabeth wrote to me. She said she heard about a few apps on the Today Show and she wanted to know if they were legit. So first of all, I just really love that she looks to us to see yeah. if the Today Show is Well, we legit. know the Today Show is fake news. So <laughs> it's good she called us. The serious, credible journalists it is really, in turkey hats. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. What the, 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 that the, Matt the Lauer is a silly, <laughs> silly person. So the the app, one of the apps she saw was called the Raise app. Have you heard of this? Uh, no. It's a gift card, and I had heard about it. I might have heard about it in Consumer Reports. I know it was on this list I have of apps that I want oh, to try. Oh, I, I yes. Yeah, so go ahead, tell, tell so us. So it's to buy gift cards. Yes. For cheaper than than they're worth, and to sell your old gift cards if you have a bunch of gift cards sitting around. Oh, that's neat. Um, so it's so, like a gift card exchange. Cut. Well, yeah, but you don't have to exchange. I bought one from Target because I, you know, I needed to do my research. Like, you know, we are real journalists here. Yeah. <laughs> I bought a ten dollar Target gift card for nine fifty. <laughs> oh. And uh, yeah, and it it was for online only, but so you can just shop with confidence. You can shop now. That's nice. You can get. Um, Let's see. What should we buy? Um, gift cards are really a great way to buy gifts because, you know, it's easy. Right. The thing I don't like about digital is you can't, like, put it in an envelope and mail it. You can't, like, That's wrap true. it. You can't put it in a stocking. So, but these are pretty good deals. You can get a $500 Amazon gift card for four ninety five. You can get, you know, it's it's not a lot off, but if you spend a lot That's on Amazon. 1% off. <laughs> It is 1% off. Okay. <laughs> but let's say you're buying a bunch of $500. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not. It adds up. It's, it's a good value. Yeah. Uh, I have an uh, iTunes gift card that I wanted to get rid of because. I like that. But they don't take, they, they'll oh. sell them, but they don't take them. Because I don't know. I bought a $50 iTunes gift card for my nephew and my sister was like, he has Apple Music. Like he doesn't, what would he buy? You yeah. know, he doesn't buy movies. What do you get kids these days? Yeah, what they do you get? They got everything. Yeah, and what do you buy on iTunes? Yeah. yeah, they don't, yeah, kids don't think they need to own oh. anything. Sorry, you so. got credit. Did they give it back to you? Uh, Well, no, I didn't, and I got him something else. Oh. I have it sitting around. I see. So When's your birthday? I'll buy it from you. You yeah. will? What do you buy on iTunes? For forty nine ninety five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I knew there was a reason for doing this show. <laughs> I don't um, want to nickel off. So, yeah, I don't think they're all online. I think you can get, well, they probably don't mail them to you. It's probably, yeah, yeah it's delivered to your wallet. Right. And then you have a wallet and you can use sense. it. Yes, here's your wallet. There's here's your, my there's wallet. your 1% savings right Oh, and you create right a, a four-digit pin so that no one can see my Good. wallet. Yeah. So the Raise app. Okay, R-A-I-S-E. 
Yes, our like raise. Like, I'll raise you one iTunes gift card. Maybe that's where it comes from. I don't know. Or I'm getting you're giving me a raise, and it's going to come in the form of this iTunes gift card I give you. I don't know why it's called raise. We should send this video to the Today Show. <laughs> we surely should. <laughs> See, yeah, we did this review. <laughs> You can always trust. I mean, you can really trust people who will wear hats. That's like this. We have so much dignity to spare mm -hmm. that we will actually give up our dignity on the show for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. That's how much dignity we have. Yes. Is it my turn? Yes, it's your turn. Well, I've always wanted to go to medical school. <laughs> and since we're talking, we're but talking health, mm -hmm. you must have played the game Operation, right? I must have. This is... Surgical Simulator. Is that supposed to sound like ER? Yeah, the phone's always ringing in the ER. Help me, help me. I guess I could answer it. Maybe not. <laughs> Let's do a heart transplant. How would you like to? So this is Surgeon Simulator. <laughs> uh, there's Bob. And uh, Bob, fortunately, the nurse has already come and, and Bob's already been prepped. Ooh. Blood level, look at that. Heart, uh, loss rate, he hasn't losing any blood. His heart rate, nice, 72 beats per minute. I say Bob's in great shape. Let's just stitch him up and go home. Oh, no, you really want us to do that? Well, how about if I get some... Oh, God, I dropped the hammer on him. Oh, Well, no. I guess I probably have to crack these ribs anyway, right? Do so. you? <laughs> yes, you do. So, oh, 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 how's his heart rate? Oh, his blood level is, is going somewhere. I wish my surgeon could use two <laughs> fingers like that whenever he's operating on me. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to use a hammer to crack ribs. No? All right, well, let's see what else I got here. <laughs> That's all I got, man. What is this? Oh, that looks good. That's a yeah. drill of some kind. Let's just turn it around and not try to drill with the back end of that thing here. All right, here we go. Drill and drill. Dr. Mom says you use shears. Drill. Shears. All right, let's see if there's some shears here. Don't leave that in the patient, by I don't the way. Think you have yeah. uh, oh, how about that? That's yes. kind of that's the modern shears. This is what they use in my hospital, the axe. <laughs> Oops, I, did I hit him? I think I dropped the axe. Nurse, can you be, get that axe over there? Let's put the Q-tips back. Oh, oh, no. they're all over the place now. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a junior mint. All right. Uh, I'm. Well, let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, is that? You think maybe that'll work? Yes. That looks good. That is how I Don't, always crack I'll, I'll just pour some alcohol in there and make sure he's sterile. All right. That's now, here we go. a bottle of water in case you Is it? In case thirsty. I get thirsty? All right. It's, a, it's not as easy as it looks. Does it look easy? Oh, poor guy. I'm, I'm doing something to his head. Let's not. Let's get in here. All right. Hammer. <laughs> Let me get Okay, yeah. use the hammer. Hammer. What's going on? Okay, obviously I have to go back to medical school. This is not the way they do it in Grey's Anatomy. I'll just tell you that. Uh, forceps. I, just because I know what those are called. Okay. Um, time is, is ticking here. Let's see what uh, his heart rate is. Oh, that did something. I don't know. What, oh, can I can I go can I go clear and, and give him... Yeah, let's... Wait, whoa. Uh, there's the paddle here. Here we go. Let's oh. see if we can start his heart up. Uh... What's that? It's a box. I don't know what that is. Anyway, uh, lots of fun for the whole family. Surgeon simulator. I would say maybe not the whole family. <laughs> is this free? Does this cost less than medical I, school? Uh, yes. Guarantee you that. I don't know how much it costs, but I, I decided to buy I've killed Bob a couple of times. Mm. Today is his lucky day. Bob, we're just going to have to uh, stitch you up and say you're good to go, my friend, because uh, get that scalpel out of there before we do, though. Right? All right. And what is that? Does he need that? Oh. That looks is like that his a heart? kidney? Or a kidney? Liver, perhaps? I really want to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I have? What does this do? Uh, there are the shears. Uh, oh, God, I turned off the monitor. How am I going to know how he's doing? All right. <laughs> let's get that. Let's try some more. One more time with a hammer. It'd be awesome if this was real, like you were the like, actual person. It might be. Were... For all we know, this is attached <laughs> to somebody in Phoenix, Arizona. That's the future. And uh, that would be the future. And uh, and I could be the... I'll be the... Oh, good. There we go. We're getting those, getting those ribs out of there. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, you know... Throw away the hammer. I don't need that anymore. Now, can I get a lung out? Let's get some of those ribs out. Oh, some good. pieces in there. You did it. I left some pieces in there. 
Get out of there. What's this? Is this... Oh, I, I need the hammer back. Where'd it go? Oh, man. It's on the ground, so I don't think you should use it anymore. No, that's okay. The whole <laughs> room is sterile. We we sprayed it before we began. <laughs> There's nothing... What is that, toilet paper roll? I don't think I need that. Or is those... Are those... Oh, it broke. Put a little glass in there. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Um... Uh, he doesn't his heart rate's 171. Is that that seems high? Yeah. His blood loss is seven milliliters a second. He's going down. Um oh he's he's stabilized, thank oh, god. Oh good. So Great uh job. You mm. saved his life. <laughs> Dr. Well. Mom says only the green areas are sterile. Dr. Mom, it's a game. This is Surgeon Simulator. I hope you've enjoyed this. I really have enjoyed that. I wish it were in VR, though. You know, that's inevitably the next step, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, yeah. I feel like there needs to be... Well, because Job Simulator, does that have Surgeon? It should. A reset. Let's restart. Let's start this over again. Okay, well... Oh, um, and here's some hints, by the way. I should have read the hints. <laughs> it says, do not... Knocking Bob on the side of the head. What? What? You went too fast. Defibrillators could save Bob from... I know that. Watch for the... Oh, perform a heart transplant. I don't even know where the other heart is. <laughs> it's in the, It was in that box with the Q-tips. Oh, <laughs> that's what that was for. All right. Once again, you've shared a wonderful hour of <laughs> hour. joy. Mirth, mayhem. IOS. We discussed all the things you need to know. From health to stealing your uh, neighbor's Apple TV. I don't Singles. know how this show could get any better, except maybe <laughs> if we had hats. We have hats. Okay. I don't know how it's it could get any better. It's as good as it's going to get. I don't know how it could get, be in, get any better. Email me at Megan at twit.tv if you have any suggestions for things we could do better or worse. <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is there a phone number they could call and leave yeah, a, a message? Because we don't get, I want more voicemails. Yeah, I want more voicemails Keep too. Keep them to 30 seconds. Just say your first name and city too at the beginning so we know who you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and we have a number, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Sorry. How many years? Uh, there it is. Right there 757 on the page. 757-504-IPAD. 757-504-IPAD. That's not a toll-free number, but it's not real expensive. Depends on your phone plan. <laughs> so call us and uh, leave a message, 30 seconds or less, and ask a question, make a suggestion, mock our hats, whatever. Yeah. And l we love videos. Send us videos, Oh, too. YouTube. You yeah. just put them up on YouTube and then send us the link. That'd be mm -hmm. great. Yep. Megan at twit.tv. Thanks for joining us. We do the show every Monday at about 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern. That's now 20.30 UTC because we are in summertime, even if you're not. So there. 20.30 UTC. Please stop by. Say hi. We'd love to have you in the in the show, uh, either in the chat room at irc.twit.tv or in studio, email tickets at twit.tv. But if you can't watch on uh, the live stream, do watch on demand. Uh, just go to twit.tv slash iOS or wherever you get your favorite podcast. Do subscribe, though, would you please? You don't have to watch them if you subscribe. That's the deal we'll make. Okay? We'll see you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye. <coughs> Give me a hammer. <coughs>